Imagine a time in history when the Adriatic Sea was teeming with pirate ships. This was the time when Queen Tuta of Illyria ruled. In the wake of King Agron's death, a formidable woman ascended to the Illyrian throne. Tuta, Agron's widow, was not a queen who would sit idly by. She had a vision for Illyria, one that expanded far beyond its current borders. A vision that was aggressive, ambitious, and inevitably controversial. Her reign marked a turning point in Illyrian history. Tuta was a queen who was unafraid to challenge the status quo, and she did so with a fervor that would change the course of her people's history. She was not just a queen, she was a warrior, a strategist, a visionary. She was the embodiment of Illyrian strength and resilience. Her approach to governance was unorthodox, to say the least. She had a hands-off approach when it came to administrative matters, leaving them in the capable hands of her trusted advisors. Instead, she focused her energies on military matters, leading her forces with a fierce determination that was both inspiring and terrifying. The city of Phoenix, a jewel of Epirus, found itself caught in the crossfire of Illyrian expansion. The city, nestled along the coastline of Elis and Messenia, was an irresistible target for the Illyrians who were accustomed to raiding these lands with impunity. This time, however, the Illyrians had a new tactic up their sleeves. They enlisted the help of 800 Gaulish mercenaries, paid handsomely to betray the city from the inside. In a swift and ruthless move, the Illyrians and the turncoat Gauls seized the city. The inhabitants, caught unawares, could do little but surrender to their new overlords. Yet, the Epirots were not ready to admit defeat. Gathering their forces, they marched towards Phoenix, their hearts set on liberating the city from the Illyrian grasp. The Epirots made camp beside a river near the city, even going to the lengths of disassembling the bridge to secure their position. Yet, they let their guard down, indulging in the bounties of the fields and neglecting their sentries. The Illyrians, ever the cunning strategists, seized this opportunity. In the cover of darkness, they crossed the river, reinstating the planks on the bridge and took a fortified position. As dawn broke, the Epirots found themselves facing the Illyrians on the battlefield. Despite their best efforts, the Epirots were outmatched. The battle ended in a resounding defeat, with many Epirots either killed or captured, while the survivors fled towards Atentanus. The fall of Phoenix was a demonstration of Illyrian military might, but it also marked the beginning of a larger conflict. The humbled Epirots, their confidence shattered, sought aid from the Aetolian and Achaean leagues. Their plea for help would not fall on deaf ears, setting the stage for a larger confrontation in the days to come. But that is a story for another time. For now, let's remember the Siege of Phoenix, a testament to the cunning and strategic prowess of the Illyrians, and a pivotal moment in the history of Illyrian expansion. In the face of Illyrian aggression, the Epirots turned to their allies, the Aetolian and Achaean leagues. With their lands ravaged and their confidence fractured, the Epirots sought assistance in their desperate plight. The Aetolian and Achaean leagues, moved by the plight of the Epirots, pledged their support, preparing their forces for the encounter with the Illyrian invaders. As the Aetolian and Achaean forces reached Helicranum, the Illyrians, now joined by the Gauls and Serdalidas, advanced towards the town. Initially, the Illyrians sought a pitched battle, a direct confrontation, setting up their camp in close proximity to the enemy. However, the rugged terrain of the region posed a significant challenge, hindering their initial plan. In a twist of fate, urgent missives from Tuta arrived, calling the Illyrian forces back home. An internal conflict had erupted within Illyria, with some Illyrians siding with the Dardanians, a rival tribe. This unexpected rebellion at home forced the Illyrians to reassess their strategy. A direct confrontation with the Aetolian forces had to be postponed. In a bid to resolve the immediate conflict, the Illyrians brokered a truce with the Epirots. The agreement stipulated that in exchange for a ransom, the Illyrians would relinquish control of Phineas and its free citizens. However, they were to retain all the chattels, including slaves, which they loaded onto their lemboi, a type of Illyrian ship. With the truce in effect, the Illyrians began their retreat. Some departed by sea, while Skirtalatas and his forces retraced their overland route through the Antigonia defile. This retreat marked a crucial turning point in the conflict, 
offering the Epirots a reprieve from the relentless Illyrian aggression. The Illyrian retreat marked a turning point in the conflict, but the story of Illyria was far from over. The tale of Tuda's reign, the siege of Phoenix, and the Aetolian intervention is a testament to the complex and dynamic nature of Illyrian history, a narrative that we will continue to unravel in our following scenes. As the dust settled, the Illyrians left a lasting mark on the history of the region. Queen Tuda's aggressive policies set the stage, her audacious siege of Phoenix marked a high point in the Illyrian power. Yet the intervention of the Aetolian and Achaean leagues, acting out of compassion and strategic foresight, turned the tide. The Illyrians, faced with internal threats and entangled in a complex geopolitical web, had to retreat, leaving behind a landscape forever altered. The effects of these events rippled through time, shaping the region's destiny. The audacious Illyrian exploits became a cautionary tale of unchecked ambition and the inherent risk of overreaching. Their retreat, on the other hand, served as a testament to the power of unity and the potential of alliances to change the course of history. Although the Illyrian Empire eventually fell, its legacy lived on in the form of stories, legends, and lessons of history.